we continue with the chapter system models right and as already uh, you know right we have gone through the behavioral model state diagram data models data flow diagram that we have gone through right we have gone through use case model we have gone through the sequence diagram and all they're all different models and each one has its own perspective that's what uh, i shared with you all people okay let's get into the today's business right what we are going to do right um, a look at this <coughs> last class coverage right whatever we have one moment yeah uh, last class coverage when you look into this um, see we were going through the data flow diagrams the very purpose of the data flow diagram is to represent different processes okay, in the given system and how the data from the first page to the last page keeps on moving and get transformed and all. That's the purpose of data flow diagram. And it's one perspective. So that you will come to know about that one, how data transformation takes place okay, among the different processes that are involved in that makes the whole system. Okay, this is what we were going through yesterday. I mean, we are stopped here. This is the uh, diagram taken from the textbook. Right? So now, uh, the data flow models, you can write, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in the examination, you get a, a description and you are supposed to write a data flow diagram for that description. Now, let's keep on moving uh, as per the syllabus when we get into state machine models. Already, we have gone through the state diagram. Uh, particularly for the sta uh, stack. The state machine model, it describes basically the different state of a given particular system and how do it respond uh, to the internal and external events. That's very important, right? You all people know that one, you are in a particular state and when you receive an input, you uh, uh, make a transition to the other state and you have studied this in depth in finite automata and formal languages. And please remember, okay, you will get a sure question on all these models. Minimum 10 marks, take it. Minimum 10 marks in semester and exam and surely in internal exam. This is the portion for the second internal exam, right? Thus, um, here is an example, few examples we'll try to look into, which uh, majority of us we understand. We know, right, we every day we key a drive a vehicle and all with a geared uh, system and all. Let's look into <coughs> how does it is being represented. Let me use okay the marker here. I use a marker, right? Now this is there are different symbols that are being used. This is the beginning, starting point of that one. So this is a start, and you have something like an end, and also we'll see that you begin with this, and you get into the the machine is in the neutral state. Right, this. So when a okay, machine, a okay, engine is in neutral state, when you push reverse, okay, R, R indicate reverse, you get into the reverse state and the behavior of the machine is different. And when again push, okay, this one neutral, you get into the neutral. Look at that. From neutral, you can go to the reverse and from reverse, you can come to the neutral. From neutral, you all people know about that, okay. When you push, okay, forward in the direction, a gear system, you get into the forward state, but forward state is being represented into another submachine. Please remember the beauty of this, right? This is not only the state. This entire state represents by itself okay, the another machine. We call it the submachine. Now look at that submachine. It begins here, right? It is the name of the submachine is forward, right? You are in the first gear, right? It begins with the first gear, right? That means from neutral, you can go to the first gear, remember, right? You cannot get into the any other gear, right? In this particular behavior, right? Don't say that in my machine, my vehicle, something different. No, right? When you upshift that one, you go to the second gear. When again you upshift that one, you go to third gear. I mean, okay, downshift, you come to from third to second, second to first, like this. Now, what is the behavior, right? You can move from first gear to second gear but you cannot move from the first gear to the third gear directly, right? Look at that. But your machine, okay, may work differently, right? For example, you are in the first gear, you have to come to the neutral 
and then from the neutral you can get into the first gear then from the first gear again go to the neutral okay then get into the second gear third gear whatever that is there first gear to the second gear shifting may not be possible in some machine right but in this case right uh, if your if your vehicle is running in first gear to gear, move to the second gear you need not go to the neutral right you need not go to the neutral you can shift okay uh, to the second gear directly from second gear you can shift to third gear directly right this is how you can do it but one constraint is that okay from the forward okay the car transmission to the reverse if you want to do you have to go to the neutral and then get into the the either a forward or reverse depending on what exactly you wish so this is a behavior right so how do, i mean this is another model with which we try to understand uh, the behavior of the system and that's what we have seen uh, in case of the stack and with that we have developed the test cases also test script also assignment is also given you need to work on that right and this state diagram is heavily used in digital circuit design network protocol modeling right and behavioral model where right the behavior of the machine or the system or the product depends on the input it keeps on uh, behaving differently depending on in which state particular machine is right under that circumstance okay we go for state diagram state diagram is one of the very popular tool uh, and is called state machine and all so any question at this stage and i think i mean you people you can re uh, recollecting your ffl right some of the ffl question also you may get it here please remember in the examination some of the ffl questions you may get it to model okay that particular system and all are you okay with this are you okay with this are you okay with this yes sir okay that's good right now uh, i'll keep moving to the next one uh, i don't want to go into the depth of that but uh, i'll i'd like to repeat i'm repeating several times right let it be use case model sequence diagram use case diagram sequence diagram right or a state diagram data flow diagram these are the four diagrams that we have seen it please remember right you will get sure question right of minimum 10 marks in the final exam minimum 10 marks right and in internal exam naturally and these are the very important things which you need to understand uh, when you are doing projects and all project when you represent your ideas with the architecture diagram with a use case diagram right it is a sequence diagram with a state diagram with a data flow diagram all these diagrams okay if they are essential right architecture diagram is essential use case diagram you have how to mention about that sequence diagram you will be getting into state diagram you are going okay if and if the behavior of any product or the system or the subsystem can be modeled in terms of different state and the uh, the transition depending on uh, the internally generated input or external input whatever it receives if that kind of feature is seen then only you are going for the state diagram otherwise not and also we have seen it also the decision tables earlier in requirement specification we have seen addition tables these are the the diagrams or models or the design tools right which we have gone through please remember all will appear surely in the examination all will appear in the uh, again examination so prepare thoroughly right so we'll see that one uh, if if required we'll conduct one more class test also right yes shall i move to the next one shall i move to the next one yes sir yes yeah that's good right now look at the, the another example a simple example right when you write a state diagram sometimes you put a condition also as a label right see here uh, let me start using marker here right this is the air conditioner relay air conditioner simple you can take a mixer grinder it is a switched off mixer grinder is switched off and you make a transition to switch on 
and okay and again when you press a button it will move to the switch off state which is very simple you know any switch in your home right it behaves like this right when you do a transition here right you can put certain conditions right and condition is being represented by when right please look into that when is a keyword when in the bracket temperature variables greater than target again a variable and season switch right in cool this is the textual description of that when temperature is more than target and season switch is on in cool and naturally the ac off will become automatically ac on driven by the internal batteries and all right so what is the, the take home from this particular diagram is that one okay how do i you represent a certain constraint on transition are you getting this are you okay are you okay i want people to respond yes sir yeah that's good that's good now look into that right say when you are in the ac on here right you when you are in a particular state there are so many activities taking place within that state there need not be any migration or transition from that state to the other state right and that is being run what what you will do in that particular state is being represented by what is called as a do okay now look into this do here do and forward slash you will say run ac i mean it continuously keep on running ac it is a continuous when you enter into that state what is that you are supposed to do that do keyword using that okay these are all textual things right so this is how you represent okay what it should do in in that particular state and continue doing this now look at the other interesting things right you make a transition from ac on to ac off when again here you have got a condition condition is when temperature is less than target when temperature sorry less than target minus d right please remember right when target minus d all these are variables right that means when temperature goes below certain right the margin keeping the certain margin and all right target minus d target is say 30 degree right 30 minus say 2 degree 30 minus 2 until that right okay less than that right so and switch uh, a season switch is not in cool right simply it will go to the off state or please look at the condition here or right does so your target is 30 degree or sorry you take it as 25 degree right got it so 25 degree you have to maintain right 25 minus say 1 degree so uh, less than 24 right if it reach okay reaches right it switch off you don't need uh, uh, the ac to be switched on got it so d is again a variable it depends on the domain whatever or season switch is not in cool state irrespective of the temperature so under that circumstances you make a transition so you can write the conditions okay for the transition using what is called as a van right so are you okay here are you okay yes sir okay please look into that see these are all examples but what you will be doing in the exam is given one page description you will be writing a state diagram are you getting this right so now okay very complex okay example okay would like to see that one how does things goes right please look into Uh, doing a project is a complex activity doing a project is a complex activity and not a simple one so the models are necessary right machine this is the state machine model of a simple microwave oven please look into that okay if you have used the microwave oven right many times today we find that right we people though we call as an engineer we do not know right the the working of different household equipments and all how many of you know 
replaced fuse in your electrical fuse in your home can anybody okay raise your hand okay wise response can you give it how many of you right uh, replace the electrical fuse how many of you uh, fitted right tube light okay how many of you fitted a ceiling fan in your home may i know from you ashish hello how many of you uh, ashish. ashish is not there sir okay arpita your name is arpita or what uh, yes uh, okay tell me how many of you right how many of you i mean uh, fitted the ceiling fan in your home tube light in your home replaced the uh, replaced the electrical fuse right or did some kind of maintenance with uh, uh, what i can say mixer grinder in your home or gas stove how many of times you have repaired that one what i am saying is that one okay please remember knowledge of everything is necessary being an engineer okay you should be in the position to okay get connected with all household equipment please do that so what i was saying is microwave oven you may be having in your home but you might not operate it hello so one of the students is in the queue okay 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 uh three participants participants okay let them come again i will uh, take them into this right you remind me once again all right so microwave oven may be there in your home but yet you might not have operated that very unfortunate part of any engineer's life right engineer is a one okay who should know every working of every household equipments repair minor repair work here and there okay that kind of things so let's look into how does this microwave oven works right yes see there are a lot of complex right activity right here then uh, get into this one minute right so let's get into uh, one uh, uh, one state right so let's get into this waiting state what is doing is a waiting okay do display the time okay half power right when that input comes right it gets into waiting do display the time that's all right when a full power is being applied right it gets into full power state right do set power equal to whatever that is there here right now from this right full power state timer when the timer thing is being pressed right it get into the set time mode set time mode wherein do get the number exit set time do it continue to do setting the time right you keep on entering the number it get into right exit when you press an exit whatever provision is there right it set the time and comes out of that the exit could be okay from here how do you move from state set state set time state if it door may be closed okay door may be open right etc right now look at that the door is closed door is closed you get into enabled state right you 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 keep on displaying displaying right i am ready okay ready state then the moment it starts you press the start button right it gets into operation mode right whatever the settings is there accordingly it continue to do operating oh okay I'll, this microwave oven right if you cancel you press it that again it is waiting okay with the display time and all these things right when the door is open when it is operating when the door is open it is disabled okay display waiting right again when the door is closed you get into right start state right and keep moving like this right so now please look into that how the behavior of the system is being expressed here right now these are all okay 
terminologies that is being used you need to get into without knowing this data dictionary right about the what is a half power what is a full power what is a weighting okay what do you mean by applying full power until unless you know about that one it becomes a very difficult to catch the domain knowledge in this particular diagram but you as an engineer you should be in the uh, in the position to uh, make it out what exactly it means right so hope you understand how a state diagram will become a complex for such simple system is that okay and these are the diagrams not to be remembered. What you have to remember is what notation you use, right? Here, do, right? Then exit, right? How do you represent it? How do you represent the state? How do you represent the transition? That's all. Not to remember this particular thing. Is it okay? Akshita, is it okay? Yes. Yeah, please. Right. Sorry, okay. Hello? You are audio? Yes, oh, okay, I'll keep moving. The students. students are waiting. Okay, oh, fine. Uh, admitted. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is how things gets into, right? Now, look at that. This is what I was referring even in data flow diagram, right? Uh, otherwise, okay, we call it a data dictionary. The moment you write a diagram, you cannot keep it like this. You need to describe that one. Please look into that, okay? Waiting. What do you mean by waiting? The own is waiting for input. The display shows the current time. So, very apt description very appropriate description, very professionally written things, right? Half power, the one power is set to 300 watts, the display shows half power, that's what is the state. So every state you need to describe what exactly that state represents, right? Look at enable, the oven operation is enabled, interior oven light is off, display shows, display shows ready to cook. Right? It is an enabled state. Right? Look at that enabled. But it is not started. Right? When you look at the operation, right? One minute. When you look at the operation, oven is in operation, interior oven light is on, display shows the timer countdown. On completion of the cooking, the buzzer is sounded for 5 seconds, oven light is on, display shows cooking complete while buzzer is sounding. Look at that, how the, the operation state is being described very professionally. So when you are writing a state diagram in the exam or otherwise in the projects and all, you are expected to okay, be right at least at par with whatever the things you are seeing here in terms of professional writing. Is it okay? The question two. You people, please respond. Coordinator, please respond. Is it okay? Yes. Ah, that's good. That's good. Right. So, it is not to remember. Please don't remember any example. But every example okay, given in the textbook, you must go through and it is necessary. Right? You must understand that. Right? Yes. Okay. Stimulus. Half a power. The user has pressed the half power button. Full power. The user has pressed the full power button. Timer. The user has pressed the one of the timer button. Number. The user has pressed the numeric key from okay, available in the keypad. Door open. The oven door switch is not closed. Door closed. The oven door switch is closed. Start. The user has pressed the start button. See, your question may be, uh, why should we write all these things? This data dictionary is necessary because, right, the people who are using this, right, they, you should make it very clear about every aspect. Okay, you cannot assume anything here. In software engineering, you cannot assume. People know 
what is what no you must explain every term this is called data dictionary are you clear about this are you clear about this yes sir right so far what we were saying is right state model then before that we could see data flow diagram as a part of the data model right then after this we will get into the another interesting thing right uh, in dbms uh, have you studied dbms or you are you are studying now we are studying it in this sem oh that's great there you will come across entity relation attribute model era modeling entity relationship model er model er model is a popular thing used in dbms whether the er model is started in your uh, dbms class yes sir right who is taking for your class shivan gowda sir that's great right so go through that one we will touch we will touch upon little here and get into that is also part of the data models probably uh, you will make you make it a question right uh, list and explain with example the various data models or prepare a business scenario prepare a business scenario to explain different data models please remember there preparing business scenario and accordingly writing preparing the data model is more important simply whatever that is there in the book if at all you write it you may not get it right are you getting this now there are two answers one answer right uh, prepares their own business model which is not part of the textbook and write it the other student whatever in the textbook given as it is they write it so both are for 10 marks who will get more marks both answers are correct 100% correct the people who have prepared their own business scenario not there in the book they get 10 out of 10 uh, okay and the people who have copied from the book remembered and then written from the book they get 8 out of 10 are you getting this please respond are you getting this yes sir please note this all of you right your own okay application of knowledge to different situation that will be honored more though the answer both the answers are correct and it cannot be part of the scheme are you getting it because learning is being evaluated right so if you remember whatever that is given in the book as it is if you reproduce you may not get a marks though accidentally okay you get a question sometimes from the book itself where solution is directly from the book or solution one of the solution is available in the book sorry so this is about the data models so we'll get into right little bit of that right a simple example right so you have a entity relationship model and a relationship between the entity a okay, case you can entities you can say one to one one to many many to many relationship all these things probably might have gone through that entity relationship a okay, uh, uh, relationship okay cardinality and all those things are not written here right so look at that employees right are assigned to different projects okay you have employees as an entity project is another entity and relationship between these two is okay is being shown here as a relation right okay this so employee relation is nothing but a table employees the attributes of the employees are employee id okay it is being underlined or hash symbol may be put in front of that indicating that it is a key right uh, the key values are unique for example you, uh, you have a usa number your unique usa number right employee name salary these are the other attributes then uh, okay projects you have project id project name manager project id is a key with which you can uniquely identify every project so what we do when you try to relate with that one okay that relationship is again given a name okay assigned to what we do is we pull primary key from employees primary key from the project and try to put it here and get into right this is simple introduction the more detailed one you will see it in your dbms 
let's not get into different examples of all these things right but what kind of relationship right what kind of relationship is it one to one one to many many to many between the employees and project it all depends on business constraint so probably you might have come across in your uh, um, shivan gowda's class okay something writing here right so here something relation like this am i right am i right m and 1 yes sir yes right what is the meaning of this right so it is how do they participate in the relationship are you getting this right so employees in project a particular employees work on a single project right or m to n right thus please go through all these things okay on particular project there are many employees working on that how to table represents all these things how do okay table it represents right the number of instances participating in this assign to right many to many relationship a particular employee works on more than one project and a particular project many people are working on that i may work okay on more than one project are you getting this right so this is how things can be seen right so there are lot many questions you may get it on this please refer dbms and same question may appear here also so i will not so i think probably from now the book you can see all these things right works for that's what i was talking relationship a look at the relationship here right uh, it is employee work for a department see look at that this department d1 it appears here it appears here it appears here with a uh, different people are you getting it right so it works with even even works in department even like okay, e3 works in this one and okay employee e6 works with uh, okay department b1 this people which already you have gone through right so what kind of things right you wanted a relationship between and relationship between these okay they are given a name and this is also represented as a table this is also represented as a table this also is being represented as a table right table did you come across the term table did you come across the term table in your dbms akshita yes sir yeah right i am just introducing that one details you will be studying in your dbms right so i'll leave it i'll leave it i think this is the another example people might have given here right no another best okay relationship how it is being represented is say look at that 1,1 4,1 n right so all these things please get into goes through on that right so here participation of one end right into this relationship right thus right employee wa employee works with a particular department are you getting it then what exactly the 4 comma n stands for please go through all these things please go through all these things this is a good representation that you can have it right so <clears throat> these are the different symbols that is being used entity weak entity relationship identifying relationship attribute key attribute multi valued attribute right okay then composite attribute then derived attribute hope you understand all these things right total participation of e2 in e1 what is meaning of total participation right then cardinality ratio 1 is to 1 and min max constraint structural constraint minimum is this maximum is this right this is very important thing a look into that min max constraint can you read with a minimum min max min max constraint is the best way of representing the relationship right look at that 
Okay, here minimum one and maximum one. That means every employee must work. They cannot be on the bench. And maximum that one they participate in relationship. It means that right. Okay, employee can work with one department only. For example, I got employee one, employee two, employee three here. Here in this, and consider the department is A, okay, B, right, and C. Then this works for can be visualized as a table, right? Is something like this. I can look into that, right? Here every employee one, two, three, okay, one. Okay, two, three. For example, consider one works with department A, right? Two works with department B, three, right? Works with department C. Now look at that. Uh, now I will put one more. One also works with department B. Can it appear like this? No, right? Why? It cannot appear, right? Like this because of this constraint it can appear minimum one and maximum one so it cannot appear right minimum one maximum one right now consider that this employee number three is not being put into that is it permitted no right got it minimum once right it has to appear that means every every employee should work every employee should work that should appear minimum once here <coughs> maximum once now look at that okay here four comma n department now one b is okay okay uh, two b is okay right i can make three also b is working okay right then four also four employee four working on b is okay right b how many times one two three four then employee number five i'll make it to work in the department b will it accept so b how many times it can appear one maximum right minimum four maximum n right so minimum four and maximum okay and any number of people can work in the department the department can appear minimum four times maximum n times so permitted right so please look into that all these things constraint okay understanding right so that's what is being explained here min max structural constraint min max on participation of okay e in r participation of entity e in r min max minimum is this many times maximum is this how how do we ensure how do we ensure in programming right having designed all these things how do you ensure okay that part is a very interesting thing right so it is beyond the scope of our coverage you will see it in database programming and all right yes I'll not take examples. Please go through uh, entity. I mean, ER model in your DBMS, right? Uh, so when you look at the uh, UML model, right? We have seen the use case diagram. We have seen it. Use case diagram. We have seen it. This one we have seen, right? State diagram. We have seen it. Sequence diagram, you have seen it. These are all different models. Right? So we'll try to see, right, this particular aspect, or we'll skip it. Uh, we will not cover this. We'll not cover this. Right? So remaining things we'll see later stage. Later stage. Right? But please look, use case diagram, we have seen it. State diagram, we have seen it. Sequence diagram, we have seen it. So, any question at this stage? Any question at this stage? Today we have seen the ER model that we have seen it, and also we have seen here state diagram that once again we touched upon with introducing a term, right? The data dictionary or describing the state how exactly it's being done these two aspects that we have seen it today any questions at this stage
please make out here right the min max constraint whatever that is given please read in the book the meeting is getting ended i mean getting closed uh, with the next 2 3 minutes any question at this stage Any question at this stage? Any question at this stage? Akshita? Uh, there are no questions here. Right. So we have touched upon this uh, detailed one, whatever that is there in the uh, dbms please go through that right so with this we come to the end of this particular meeting i'll close this is it okay akshita hmm? arpita uh, yeah. yes sir yes okay right